did that. So go ahead and start the recording uh, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Um, and in sharing my screen, we're going to go and we're going to start with desk. Um, so here in desk, you'll see we have all of our apps. I do have Moxie up here at the top. You are able to toggle that around as you need to. And if you're not able to find the app, those of you who attend several of my classes know this well by now, you can just start typing it into the search bar here, not the top search bar, but the, the search bar over here, and that's going to look for your app. It'll bring up anything with that particular keyword in the title or in the description as well. So we're going to go ahead and click on our Moxie present tile. Um, now we just refer to it as Moxie. It's Moxie present because it does have all of the wonderful presentation tools in it. Um, I will tell you as this gets up and running, um, any of the tools that you have in Coldwell Banker, I would highly recommend you to take ownership of them. While it's wonderful that I have a program, or in this case, a tool that I can go in and create a brand new listing presentation, I'm not going to let my sellers or my buyers, um, any of my, my prospects or clients know that this is something that was already created for me. I'm going to take ownership of this and I'm going to look at it as in, yes, I slaved over this. Like I created this from scratch. I went in, I slaved over it. Um, and again, it's just a beautiful presentation to be able to present um, to buyers and sellers alike. For this class, we are going to um, hone in on the listing presentation and a lot of the functionality will be the same for your buyer presentation as well. So you'll see when we come in, we have our uh, main screen. Um, also, if you hit control with your keyboard and you have a, uh, a regular mouse, I just have a little wireless mouse here, and you scroll up, things will get big. And if you scroll down, things will get small on your laptop. Um, you can also do that with the keypad. I'm not as good with the keypad doing that. The first thing that you want to do before you do a listing presentation is go up here to the top right hand corner and you want to click on my account. Um, you do want to go through. You want to make sure that all of the information in your account is up to date and accurate. There will be three pages of information in there for you to edit. Um, and I can help you with that as well. You'll see mine does come up as New Jersey just because it has our corporate office location um, because I'm an employee. Yours will come up with your office information. So you'll see here from our main page that I have nine pages of presentations simply because I haven't archived any of them, which I should probably do. And I teach this class frequently. Um, I love Moxie. I love how easy it is once you get in and you get acclimated with it. Um, it can sometimes be a little frustrating when you start. That's OK. Just keep going. Um, so the very first thing that I'm going to do to create a listing presentation is I'm going to click up here on this create new button. Um, so you'll see here I have all of my presentations, brokerage presentations I can get to my own library, which we will touch on. Um, but for the sake, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new presentation. I would dare say if you have not already used Moxie, I would go in after this class, kind of play around with it. I promise you won't break it. Um, and you can also add yourself as a client and you can email it to yourself to see what it looks like um, from a client perspective as well. Anytime that you come into Moxie and you want to learn something new or try something new, please feel free to also add me as a client and to send it to me as well. Um, so for this sake, we are doing a listing presentation, so I'm going to select seller. Um, so that's going to assess a current or potential home market um, homes market value with a traditional CMA. So this is where I would click on that. I'm going to click on continue. Um, and then I have a decision to make. Now I will scroll very quickly through all of the other places in the country. Um, I always do say one day we're going to do um, Hawaii, um, but that is not today. So here you'll see I'm going to get to the Mid-Atlantic region. Yours should only come up with Mid-Atlantic region. And you're going to have several options here. Now I can choose the Coldwell Banker Global Luxury Presentation. 
I do not have to be a certified global luxury specialist. Um, how I can use this. However, it does need to be in the correct price point. So I would want to go to desk and search for that price point in my area. Um, we also have the 12 minute listing presentations and I love these. Um, these are for the listing concierge packages. If that is something that you utilize, I highly recommend choosing and you will find them under gold, under platinum, and then down here under um, silver, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so you want to choose or select the, the particular listing concierge package that you would like to utilize. And what this does is it basically just outlines all of the marketing that you are going to provide the sellers. There's also a pre-listing um, pre presentation here. Um, as well as a full seller's presentation here. And that's the one that we're going to go with today just for the sake of um, for the sake of the class. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this seller presentation here by clicking on that radio button to fill that out. And I'm going to hit continue. It's going to ask me who am I preparing this particular presentation for that gives me the option to type in this per the, the client's names. So I'm going to add my parents there and I'm going to select a bright MLS from the drop down. That's going to give me the opportunity to connect to the MLS if I need to and I'm going to hit create. This is where the system is going to, in essence, seem like it's doing nothing. I call this my do nothing page. Don't panic. It is thinking what it's basically doing is at this point, the system is going to the library shelf. It's rifling through all of the books and the, the pages and all of the things that it needs, and it's selecting the presentation that you selected. And here you'll see it's going to come up now. So you have two separate options when you get to this first screen. Um, you can copy the data from the MLS number. Um, this will give you the opportunity to autofill this information here if you choose to use it. Um, and and I, I lie, you don't have two, you have three options. So you can autofill, um, you can go through and hand fill. So go through and just type all of this out yourself, or you can leave this blank. It's completely up to you. It's if you want to include information about the subject property when you meet with the sellers. Um, so this is usually a very good idea if you have a CMA that you're including. That way you have that subject property information in there. If you decide that you're not going to use this for the CMA, but only the presentation part, you may not need this information. I'm going to go ahead and use this MLS number that I've used before and hit the copy button. So you'll see it'll take it a moment. It will think it will take out that stock image for me. It will add the location of the property. It will find the property on the map as well. And I can go through and I want to edit this. Now I will caution you if you copy the data from the MLS number, please go through this with a fine tooth comb. Um, we don't know the agent that listed the home before may have done so inaccurately. There may be updates that you're aware of, et cetera. Um, you can go through and maybe you don't want it to be in all caps. Maybe you know that this is in Foster Branch. Um, I'm not a big fan of including the schools in anything. People do need to contact the local school system in case that information changes, but I will give them the school district. And again, I'm going to take out some of the tax information. It's not up to date, um, but the remainder of the information should be good. And again, if I know any of this information, I can update it. This is where I also want to look at the features of the property. Maybe I know that there's all new Pergo floors, um, anything that I've already discussed. And again, I haven't met necessarily with the sellers yet, so I may not know all of this information, but that's okay. The other thing that I want to do is I want to do um, make sure that I'm not using the remarks from the previous listing. 
So you can see here this particular property, it was a coming soon property. The agent had never gone in and fixed the remarks. So you're able to say like beautiful, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. What I always suggest here as well, and just a suggestion, um, before I meet with my seller, I like to say, what are three things about your home or your neighborhood that you love? I mean, there's gotta be something, right? Even though they're selling, um, maybe maybe they really hate the neighborhood, they hate the house, but there's gotta be something that they like and that I would include here in the remarks. Um, one reason I like to do that is they may have a perspective that I don't have. It might be something really great about the home that I'm not aware of yet. I haven't been there yet. Um, or something about the neighborhood it might be close to a park. It might be really close to, um, you know, a grocery store, a pharmacy or things of that nature. Um, and I like the seller to know that I was listening to, um, to them as well. Um, so I can leave this information in or take it out again. And I don't have to include this information if I don't want to. Um, and I can hit continue down here on the bottom. Once the screen is the way that I want it, I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Now this is where I have some options. This is where I'm able to include the CMA. So you can see here, the system is automatically pulling homes that are close to the location of the subject property. And you'll see here, it's starting to map them out for me. Um, anything in red is already sold. Anything in the gold or yellow is pending and anything is green for go or active. I'm also able to click in and get a little bit closer to the map um, to see maybe where this particular home is located, the things that are close to the home, et cetera. Um, and I can change this information as I need. There are filters here. You can choose um, to put in the filters for what you need for your CMA and apply those filters here and it will change the properties that come up. The other option that you have is if you are um, used to doing your CMA in the MLS, which is personally for me my preferred method, I can also click here on MLS and I can hit that radio button and I can take the the CMA that I've already done in the MLS and I can add it here. Um, somebody may ask, well, why would I want to do a CMA in the MLS and then use this as the presentation? This is going to have a lot of really great information for your marketing and for the company in general that you're able to utilize to sell yourself as well as the option to include your CMA here in the system. And when we do that, it is a live presentation. So what that means is for the sake of this, I've just chosen three properties. I just took the MLS numbers from these top three. Um, and even though they're really not comparable with the house, we're gonna pretend like that's our, our comparable. I can also go through and I can click to add specific properties as well. Um, so maybe I just wanna look through and click all the ranchers or you know whatever that is. Um, I can go through and so now I have five different properties selected. So I have these two selected and I wanna hit this looking glass here and I wanna look for these three that I've inputted and I can click that little plus button and that's going to add them to the CMA um, in the system. Now let's say I've added um, three properties or five properties in my CMA, however you normally do it, 10 properties, the properties themselves will never change. However, in this system, their status will always be updated. So if I've included um, five active, five under contract and five sold properties. If I open this two days from now, one of those active properties has gone under contract. It's going to reflect that in my presentation. Um, I'm also able to look where schools are. I can draw things on a map or also do a radius search if I choose to do the CMA in the system. Um, again, I, I'm a big fan of going into the 
MLS and doing it because that's how I'm familiar with it. But this is also a really good way to um, save some time on that as well. So you can see here that I do have five listings included in that CMA. And once I have that information in, I want to hit on the continue button. Um, so what's going to happen now is it's going to pull my subject property here, and then it's going to pull the five properties that I have included in my CMA. Again, we're just going to pretend for the sake of it that these are all very comparable properties. Um, I can also adjust how I would like them viewed. Maybe I want active to sold or sold to active. Um, I can choose that here per your discretion. And I can also add a custom listing if I would like to add a FISBO um, for sale by owner as well. I'm able to come over here and view all of these listings on the map, um, and it's going to give me a listing summary um, with the beds and baths, square footage, the price, and again, price per square foot. So I can go through again, double check that the listings are the ones that I want included, and then I can hit um, continue. I can also go back and add more listings here if I choose to do so. Um, once that happens, I'm going to get to my estimates page and you'll see here if you're following along, we had our subject property, we did our CMA search, we checked out our CMA listings, and now we are on our estimates page. Very frequently I hear agents that say, but I don't need this page. I don't know what the estimated net proceeds are yet because I haven't met with the client. Um, we can leave this blank, we can come back to it later if we need it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here is where I have my estimated pricing. I've heard very uh, frequently from agents, well, I don't want to give them a price before I meet with them. You can simply highlight that and take that out and leave that blank. Maybe we want to say, I look forward to discussing the price um, and marketing of your home when we meet on Tuesday, um, let's say you have an appointment. I always like to read it every night when my appointment is October 13th at 5.30 p.m. Um, this is just letting them know uh, I purposely did not put the price in there. I do want to meet with them. Um, the other reason is because I don't want them to meet with another agent who tells them their house is worth something ridiculous and then they don't want to meet with me at all because I got the price correct. Um, so again, you can choose to put that in there or maybe I want to include um, the price and I could do a range as well um, if I want to do it that way. This is probably a really big range. So you could see here, it's not gonna really allow me to do that. Um, so for this sake, I'm just going to not, not put a value on there. Um, so, then I can go over and I want to hit continue. And this is where I really have the option to make this listing presentation mine. Um, so you can see here there are 56 pages to start. That's a lot of pages. Um, and I want to go through and I want to look at every single thing that is in my presentation before I send it to make sure that it reads as my narrative does for my business. Um, so I'm able to go over to the cover page and this is a new tip and trick. You are able to edit your cover page. You can see here this cover page in the background is pretty ugly, not something that I want to send out with my marketing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this edit button and the system's going to give me all of the appropriate options for this particular listing. Um, I can give the cover a title. So maybe this is, um, you know, I'm just going to say marketing done right. Um, and I want to show who it's prepared for. I want to show my agent information and photo. Again, you can toggle off of these if you don't want to. Um, and I can also add an image here. Now I have the option as well to change the cover design. Now I will tell you, this is something that agents have asked for via the feedback and they listen to you and they have delivered. Um, so I am able to change my PDF cover. Um, it's also going to, I can also change the photo. If I want to print this out, it will come up 
um, with a particular background as well as my web based version of this listing presentation as well. Um, so really there's no wrong answer here. Whichever one you like the most, I'm just going to select one at the top and then I'm also able to add an image. This could be a stock image. It could be maybe I've driven by the house and I took a photo with my cell phone. That's OK, too, because again, this is a pre listing presentation. Anything that I've already saved in the system will be here for me and I can select and reuse those free stock images that I have or I can upload from my computer. Maybe I drove by. I got that you know, picture off of my phone. Um, now it's it's living on my computer uh, and I can go through and I can select that particular photo for this listing presentation. Again, you can also choose a free stock image. They do have some free stock images in BrandServe as well. Um, and once I've added that, I'm going to go ahead and click on that add button. Please do read all of the terms. This is just letting them know that you do own the copyright to the photo, that you did not just simply Google it and slap it on there. We don't want to do that. We don't want to get any kind of copyright infringement. Um, so I do have permission. And of course, if I took it with my cell phone, I can use it all I want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add that to the system and then I'm going to there is no save button here, so it does get a little confusing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to X out. Um, once I do that, the system will revert. You'll see here it's saving and then here I have that photo of that particular property. So I'm able to go through and the first thing I want to do if I'm unfamiliar with the system is go through and look at each page. So you can see here I have an agent profile. I can go through and edit that as I see fit, but that does feed from my account, which is up here in the right hand corner. Anything that I have there will filter through, including my personal specialized bio, my mobile information, my email, etc. Um, once I've done that, I can go through and I can click on each individual page and I can see what it says. Um, I find it a little easier just for myself to go through and hit the view button. And I'm going to go ahead and look at the web presentation. Um, this is going to give me every single page that's in my presentation. I can sit down with a piece of paper and maybe write down the, the pages that I would like to take out if there are any. Um, and I want to scroll down to view my presentation. <clears throat> now that said, this is exactly how your clients will see the presentation um, when you pull it up, when you send it to them, or if you're sitting with them, you're going through it virtually, or you're sitting um, with them you know, in person and doing this. The date that is on your presentation will always be today's date, which means tomorrow when it is October 13th, this will automatically come up and say October 13th. Um, so you can also toggle down here. We do have a hamburger menu, the three dash lines right there. I can click and I can get to any page in my report automatically. Um, I am also able to scroll from page to page by simply using the arrow button. It will go through to the next page in my web presentation. Um, so you'll see up here at the top the title of the page that will be reflected over here on your menu. So anything that you see here, I have protecting buyers and sellers. Once we get to that particular page, I will see protecting buyers and sellers. So that's what I'm saying when you go through, even if you have Moxie and you've used it before, I would suggest going through. There are some new pages in here um, because we've gone virtual. So you'll see service, excellent virtual world um, that is, you know, abbreviated there. That's OK, um, but you can go through and you can read and anything that fits the narrative for you, anything you want to share with your home sellers, um, you're able to include in your listing presentation. Um, so I won't bore you by going through all of it. Um, however, I will show you 
um, that if there's anything in here that you don't want. For example, strength in numbers is automatically in this system three times. So let me recalibrate a little, make that a little bit smaller so that we can see it. We can see here that strength in numbers. Um, and I'll again make that just a little bit smaller. And you can see that that is DC. If I'm not a DC agent, I probably do not want that in my um, presentation. I can automatically go back to my Moxie present. I can go down here and the very first strength in numbers, I can click on that and here I see DC. I don't want that in my presentation. Maybe I'm in Baltimore or you know, out in the middle of a county somewhere and I want to go ahead and click on and I'll, I'll do this in a little bit bigger in a minute, but there's a little circle with an X there and I can click that and that's going to remove that from this particular presentation. Then you'll see in the next, um, I'm going to get that exact same information with a beautiful view of the harbor. And I'm also going to get that information, strength in numbers with a beautiful kitchen. So that does give you the option. Um, as a DC agent, I can include that beautiful picture of the Washington Monument. As a Baltimore agent, I can include um, the wonderful, beautiful photo of the inner harbor, or if I want to be a little more ambiguous, no matter where I am, the kitchen always fits. Um, I can go back through and I'll make that a little larger so that you can see strength in numbers. I'm going to hover over that X with the circle and I can click to remove that. Now, granted, it is removing it from this particular presentation not my main template. However, once I'm done going through everything in this presentation, let's say I have the perfect presentation now. I've gone in, I've removed things that I don't want. Let's say I have 30 pages and they're just wonderful and it's exactly the way I want it. I can go down to the bottom and I can save this presentation as a template. This is what you want to do because you never want to open a presentation for a property and start a new listing presentation. We always want to start from a template. So I'm able to save as a template. I can give it a custom title. Um, I'm just going to say Moxie class listing presentation. You might just want to say listing presentation or seller presentation. I'm letting myself know here that this is a seller presentation and I'm able to hit the save button here. Now what happens is when I start over from scratch and I click create new, I can bypass the mid Atlantic templates. I can go to the bottom and I'm able to choose this specific template and I won't ever have to take anything out. Um, you see here, I will just get this one strength in numbers. I won't get multiples. Um, Angie, so Angie. Gonna, sure, go ahead. Are they going through and updating the templates to uh, update it to uh, uh, the Mid-Atlantic templates rather to uh, Coldwell Banker Realty? Yes, they are. So they are currently in the process of doing that in every tool in desk. Um, so I have seen some of the Moxie for me has already been updated, but my InTouch has not. Um, I worked with an agent the other day where her Moxie wasn't updated yet, but her InTouch was. So they're going through a process. Um, by the end of this week, everything in your system should be updated to Realty. Um, so you should be good to go. There isn't anything that you have to do as an agent. There's switches in the back that they're flipping, um, that they're flipping for that. Okay, um, so even yeah. if we save something as a template, it still updates our templates, correct? Yes, it will. Okay. Yes, anything in the system. Yes, and if you again, if you save this as a template, your templates will be updated as well. Yes, okay, thank you. Sure. Um, my recommendation would be to open this 56 pager to go through and to look through every single page. You can see I can simply scroll through or I can use the little arrow. I want to go through. I want to read through everything. I want to see is this a part of my narrative? How would I use this in winning a listing? Because again, this is all about your value proposition. This is your why. Remember that someone is not going to tell you hey, come to my house, give me <coughs> you know, your listing presentation and I'm just going to sign on the dotted line. They may have other agents that they want to interview, but in my mind, when I meet with that seller, 
I want them to forget about all those other people. If they have another appointment with another agent, they're going to cancel it because they're going to sign my paperwork. They're going to sign it now because I'm going to give them so much value and I'm going to give them the why behind why they are going to hire me. Um, this is a page that I do love. I work for Coldwell Banker as part of Realogy Brokerage Group. It's the number one residential real estate brokerage for 23 years. Yes, we've been around since 1906. It's 114 years of marketing um, that we have. You know, we're global. And you can see here where we far surpass anybody in our area. And some of the people in our area aren't even on the list. Um, so why is this important? Our sales volume is larger because we're a better company. That's why I work for Cobalt Banker because I'm a better agent. Um, so take the information, use it to your advantage. And yes, you can book an appointment with me if you need one on one help doing this. I am available to help you with this. I I love all the tools, really. Um, but I really like this one because you can go in. You know, I might go in and say, "Oh, local reach." Um, some of the some of the agents that sell in Cecil County, they're like, you know, this doesn't really fit my narrative. There isn't an office per se in Cecil County, even though that's where the agents themselves live. Um, so I'm able to go to the list here, um, and again, it was called local reach. I can go through and I can look for local reach here and I can remove this. And then when I save this as my template, I'll never have to go in and remove that ever again. Now it will still be in the main library. It will still be in the main template, but it won't be in my template. Um, so again, it will be my narrative, what I want to say. Again, go through, we won't uh, waste our time here doing this, but go through and look at a lot of the pages in here um, what they say, can you use them to your advantage? That being said, I would be remiss if I didn't warn you that there are three exclusive marketing tabs that are already in here. If you are using listing concierge, you definitely want to pick the color that goes with the package, silver, gold, or platinum. Um, if you would like to include them all, I can almost guarantee you that a seller is going to want you to give them the platinum because we always want the best, right? If they don't know that there's gold or platinum or silver, that's okay. Um, I did have an agent that said, well, what if I use this? And then it says exclusive marketing silver here. And the client says, well, what is silver marketing? Um, then I can say that's the special marketing that I use. It's silver. It's the fancy term for all the good marketing that I have. And you can see here, it's going to list everything that you provide with listing concierge. Um, so I'm not, you can see there's nothing here that says listing concierge. I'm not telling them that I have a program. I'm letting them think this is the marketing that I provide as their agent. I have a marketing specialist that I do work with one on one as well as a full digital marketing team at my disposal that is going to help me market your property because any marketing worth doing is worth doing right. It's not going to be completely overnight. So this is where I manage my expectation for the program. I'm not going to flip a switch and then all of a sudden you have these beautiful professional brochures and you're all over the internet like Good marketing takes time to create and to do correctly. So it may take up to a week to get some of this done, including having a professional photographer come out to make your home look its best to, again, attract the right buyer to get the best price. I'm going to have a single property website that my digital marketing team is going to professionally create and design for you. A just listed e-flyer. Again, this is something that would go out through your prospect square, letting them know that you're going to send it to every contact that you have or you know any contact that you want to send it to. They will have a professionally produced slideshow with professional voiceover narration in addition to another property tour with music as well. Um, the online promotion on YouTube. This is very important. Um, don't think that just because it's going on the Mid-Atlantic site that it's not important. Google owns YouTube. 
This is important because your property is listed on YouTube. It will be more searchable on Google and in search rankings on the Internet when people are looking for properties because Google's going to do what? It's going to want to promote its YouTube. So it's going to push out listings that are on YouTube. Um, we're going to get those professionally printed property brochures and a mobile brochure. Now, this is important as a seller because I'm going to have a what's called a dot signal rider on the reputation hanging out in your front yard because that's my sign, but that's also my reputation um, so that I'm going to do a great job. I'm trying to get five stars um, from you for customer service, and I'm going to put that out in the lawn. And what happens is someone can drive by. They don't have to get out of the car. The neighbors will never know. They can send, um, you know, text this code to a specific number and the system will automatically send them the property flyer. Now, this is important because as your agent, I will automatically receive their information. I can contact them directly and I can get them to come view your home to get it sold. Now we know as agents, that's really because we want those leads. The neighborhood announcement, so just listed for in this case, the silver, it has the postcards. <clears throat> Targeted online advertising. So again, this isn't just social media, this is the World Wide Web. It's on CNN, Wall Street Journal, HDTV, the Weather Channel, all the places. And it's targeted to people who are looking for real estate. Not going to send it to my 17 year old who's online to play Fortnite. It's going to send it to somebody that's looking for a moving company, a lender, real estate, et cetera. I'm going to let all the agents in the area know as well. I don't want a chance they haphazardly come across your property in their MLS search. We're going to send it to them directly to make sure that they notice. And again, online property syndication with all of the big players in the real estate industry, Zillow, Realtor.com, and Trulia. So again, you want to make sure that you are taking out. If you, for whatever reason, are not using listing concierge, you would take that out or include the one that you are utilizing for your narrative and your presentation purposes. Um, same thing with CBX buyer profile. If it's not something that you feel comfortable answering questions about or not something that you utilize, take it out. Um, bringing more buyers. So there are certain things that you would want to leave in your presentation. Um, but again, scroll through, look at everything that's in here, um, read through it. Home base is a great one to leave in there. What a fantastic feature. Um, I was blown away when I came to Coldwell Banker that you have something like this. So I can literally go in next year when I can't find my papers because I did not know where I put them. Um, they're in my house somewhere and I'm looking to do taxes. They can go right into the system and they can get that information. Um, it gives a very good step by step guide to what they can expect along the way. And then it also gives some information about their value. So how do, how do they stage to sell? I love that this is here because as much as you tell them to do these things, we know that sellers sometimes what they don't listen. Um, so it kind of reiterates a little bit that they want to make sure that their home is ready to sell, that it's staged and ready to go. Does give some information about Real Vitalize. For those of you that aren't familiar with the program, I would definitely go to the Help Center and read about it. It's a great option for your clients. Um, I do have information from an agent in the Beller office that used it to sell her property um, and, and really loved it herself. So from an agent and a homeowner perspective, um, if you would like, I can get you her information. Um, and then how do you position your home to sell? If you take out everything else, please don't take out this page. I feel that it lets them know this is why they're contacting an agent. It is the market condition, the home's condition, and the competition, the CMA that you provide that lets them know what their house is worth, we don't care about the original price, how much they need to make, or their opinion, or the opinion of Zillow um, when it comes to how much their home is worth. Then you're able to get into information about pricing the property correctly. And then here you'll see the property summary. So as we go down um, from property summary down to net proceeds, you're going to start 
seeing the CMA. And yes, I'm glad that you asked that, Fern, because you are able to get in here once my little doohickey stops spinning and you're able literally to click on these and drag them and drop them in the order that you prefer. Um, I like that because my narrative might be different than yours. I might like to talk about Coldwell Banker and then talk about my marketing and then talk about the CMA. Or maybe I want to talk about the CMA first and then talk about Coldwell Banker and then talk about my marketing. So it's really up to you how you want to um, put what order you'd like to put those in. Here you can see I have the property information. I didn't include a photo. So even if you want to just include a stock photo there, you're able to do so. And then here I have my CMA. So this is what the CMA portion looks like. Um, they can toggle through this subject property, which is on the star. And then they can see the other properties. I can hover um, anytime I hover. So Newberry, I'm going to hover over that. And you'll see um, it's black, you know, it has the shadow behind it. So I can see on the map where each of the properties are. I can also click on the properties. It will pull this property up. It will pull all of the information from the MLS. Um, so you can see here, this particular property is an exact replica of the property that is the subject property. So it's, it's a comparable. This one is already sold. It lets you know how much it was sold for all of the information. And they, the client can go through and they can see any information that was put into the system in the MLS as it feeds um, from the system, anything that the, that the listing agent put in there, just like it would on a CMA. Um, you also have the option to have different pages. So I can do a listing location map. They can click through, get all of the comparable information. They can do a listing overview. There's a side-by-side -side comparison status comparison, listing averages. Again, go through, you may not need all of this information and it gives me the option to go through and take that out if I need to um, and then go through my pricing analysis. You can see here, I don't have a value. <clears throat> the system will automatically come up and give them a price based on the average sales of the sold comparables um, that I gave to them. This is where it's important for them to know that I'm an agent and this is why they hire me because my expertise, not necessarily my experience, but my expertise is what is going to price their home correctly because we know that if it's priced correctly, usually it does not sit on the market, especially in this market, it's usually gone within the first week. Um, so that's where you can have that conversation with them about the price of their home. Um, net proceeds, again, this is a page that I would remove. I don't need it. Um, and then getting started. Now you are able to save this as a template. Let me go ahead and refresh this page since it seems to be a little bit stuck for me right now. Um, but once I've gotten all the pages, I want them in here. I will show you that you can rearrange. So I'm just going to left click and drag and I can drag those and I can put them in any order that I want them in. Again, make sure that it reads through with your narrative. Um, this could be something that you send to someone ahead of time, or maybe it's something that you go through in person and I can save this as a template if it's exactly the way that I want it. Um, I can go through later. If I use this, let's say this is my template, that doesn't mean that I can't go out and say, oh, you know, this person doesn't need all of these extra pages. For this particular client, I can take these out. Um, that's fine. You're also able to add pages. Um, so I can uh, create a new page here and I can upload a PDF that I already have in my computer. Um, might be a Cobalt Banker flyer or something that I've created already, um, something from Design Concierge, or I can build a page myself. I like to do this if I have listing concierge videos because if I've already listed with listing concierge, I'm going to collect, um, I'm going to create, <coughs> and I'm going to take those video URLs and I'm going to put them here and I'm going to add them and it's going to add. So here you can see there is a listing concierge video. I would add a few listing concierge videos and then that's something that I could show off to a prospective seller 
in my appointment. By the way, you will get one of these YouTube videos, which we already know because it's YouTube, Google's really going to like it and it's going to pull it up in the search results. Um, so I'm able to lay out my options. I can also copy to print the portrait version, see what the portrait version is going to look like as well and upload um, a PDF as well. So I do have some options there. I'm just going to, yeah, we'll continue. Um, and then I'm also able to add a page from the library. So this is the 50 some page base listing presentation. It does not include, although it does have one page, it doesn't include all the separate pages for listing concierge. There is a 12 minute listing presentation that just includes those. If you would like to include some of those pages here, you're able to do so. Once you click on add page, you will see your report pages. These are all of your CMA pages. Now this doesn't look like anything to me. When I look like this, when I look at this, I don't know what any of this means. So I'm able to actually click on the title of the page and it will pull it up and show me what this page is. Um, so I'm able to say, you know, I don't need that page. I'm going to remove it. Um, and it's going to take it out of the pages here. So you'll see here I have 50 pages and if I remove anything, it's going to go down to 49. Maybe I say, oh, I do need those status comparisons. I'm going to add that page in as well. And then it's going to change the pages here at the top. Um, so I'm able to do that. Any pages that I've already uploaded into the system, Moxie will save for me. So I'm able to go in. I can click on my own pages. Just be aware, you can see here I have a 30, 60, 90 day report um, that I pulled out of desk. You want to make sure that you're going in and naming that correctly because however it reads here is how it will read on the top of your report. Um, so I can also just put in, you know, 30, 60, 90 day report and save that. And you'll see here now when it pulls up, I can click on it. It's going to be now this one's old, so I don't want to use this one, but here's that 30, 60, 90 day report. And at the top, that's what it's going to read. So you can see here, I have a whole bunch of them in my particular Moxie that were saved. Some of them are old, some of them are not. Here I have some videos. I would have to go back out and fix that video. <coughs> but you'll see the information there. And there's also brokerage pages. So there are some mis miscellaneous presentation pages. You can go through and see um closing on your home again i can click on that i can read through it i can see if this is something that i want to include i can put that in my narrative somewhere um, wherever i want it in my presentation um power pre-approval some of these will be more for for so that's buyer pages um you will also have fair housing so if you'd like to include something for fair housing um you can include that as well. Anything that's in here, you're able to throw in to your presentation as you see fit. You'll see listing concierge here. There are some pages here for global luxury and the visionaries, just the regular listing concierge, and it does clue you in. So if I know that I'm doing a gold package, I can include this just e listed e flyer, but I want to leave out the neighborhood announcement because that's for silver. So I can go through and determine what I would like to add um, to my main page here. And again, that's for this presentation. Um, and I can use the breadcrumbs up here at the top to go back. And again, there's a pre listing, there's a seller presentation here, and also um, the mid Atlantic. So there are some very specific seller pages for our mid-Atlantic region as well. Um, so you can see social media influencer, it's just letting them know here are all of the social media for our area, Coldwell Banker, if that's something that you want to use. And again, I can use these breadcrumbs at the top to get back to where I came from. My recommendation would be to open some of these, um, to open the seller's presentation, to go through. And again, you'll see over here, if it says remove, that means it's already in my presentation. If it says add, that means it's not in there just yet. Um, so maybe I want to remove 
the residential brokerage and I'm going to add the realty. Eventually, residential brokerage will drop off entirely. Um, there is one that's in here um, that I really, really love. Um, and it is, if I can find it. So there's also exclusive look, Real Vitalize is in here. There's a whole bunch that are in here. Um, the one that I really love is found under report pages. Again, that's the CMA and it's called an estimate comparison. And I can add that as well. And if you click on estimate comparison, it, what it's going to do is it's going to pull all the sold properties that are in your CMA that's included. And it's going to let you know that the average estimate is 3% under. So this property um, down the street from the property that's the subject property sold for 320, but this estimate was only 287. So you'll see some of these aren't very, uh, they're not off very much at all. So this was only off by $600. $600 is still $600. Um, and you'll see the other ones are off by several thousand dollars. That's commission. I mean, 32,000, that's that's crazy. This lends to your value proposition as well. That's why they're calling you as an agent to help them list their home. Um, and then again, when you go to pages, you can scroll through, look at anything that you need. If I click on any of these, again, if I click on any of these, you'll see it pop up. I can scroll to the top. I can see what that looks like. And then I can save as a template um, so that next time I come in, everything is exactly the way that I want it. It's in the order I want it. The pages are included that I want. Um, and then I'm able to view web and I can also print this as a portrait. Um, you can take it in, have your SSA help you with the Unibind machine, bind it up as a book if you want to take with you. And I can also send this directly to my clients. I like to send it to myself, look at it from the other perspective before I share it with the client. I can opt to send it as both a PDF and as a web presentation. I can click here and put in their email address, um, subject line. So for this sake, I'm just going to say listing presentation. And then, you know, little thing here. And I can also send the copy to myself as well. And then I'm going to send that off to them. Um, that's something that they can look at on their own. Or maybe I don't want to send it to them. I want to send it to myself. I can open it when I'm sitting with them. Um, and again, I can change some of the settings. Do I want to display who it's prepared for? Do I want my office displayed? Um, you know, maybe I want to say none. That is also a direct, um, a direct thing that they did through feedback. Um, we had a couple of agents in a specific office that were selling. Uh, agents in the Bel Air office were selling in Cecil County. They were selling in Annapolis. So a lot of you move around and sell in a lot of different places. So maybe you don't want that office name displayed because you don't want people to think that you're not that area expert. You can toggle that off as well. Um, also, you're able to share from here, create a quick property flyer if you have some photos assign this to an agent. So if you have an assistant, they can do that or add a co-presenter if you're co-listing with someone else. The help and feedback is located here as well as down here. And when you click on help, you can say, you know, what, what, so um, add a photo to presentation. And it's going to give me some suggestions from the bot um, of different things that I can do. So how do I create PDFs of my presentation? How do I add the images, et cetera? Um, or you can get in touch with someone and speak to a real person or just click through and it will give you the article that you need with some videos as well. So it's a very robust help center in here. And also when you go to desk, if you click on the kebab menu, so that little vertical, three dot ellipsis there, that kebab menu. You can get to the help center here. You can also get to the help center at the top um, and we can go through and in alphabetical order, um, we can look for Moxie. This is a great place to get started if you haven't already used the system. There's a quick start guide here, um, an experience video, a little bit more about customizing your presentation. There are some training materials. 
support information and facts about the system um, tells you a little bit more about Moxie itself. Um, so I know that we went a little bit quick. I did want to be able to show you everything that the system is able to do. Um, the best way that you will learn this is to get in and just create um, a presentation. You can create it, send it to yourself, do a CMA for your own house, um, plug that in. You will have a home button here to get back to the main screen, but at any time in the system, you should be able to also click on Moxie Present here at the very left hand um, top corner and you can get back to your presentation. So you'll see here my latest presentation that I've edited. It will come up at the top left hand side. I can go through and edit that at any time. I can click on the clock to see when it was created. When is the last time I updated it? Which person updated it in case you have an assistant? And again, that kebab menu is going to get me um, to a lot of different options as well. <clears throat> I'm not a fan of duplicating. I do like to create new and choose from my main template just to make sure that everything's in good working order. Um, and I can go through and also archive them so that I don't have as many pages. Um, so I know that I went rather quickly. Does anybody have any questions? All right, we'll stop the recording for now.